Hello and a warm welcome to this second part of the wrap-up Edwards Life Science Mitral and Tricuspid Valve Therapies at London Valves. My name is Philip Nurtz from Heart Centre Leipzig and I'm very happy to be joined today by Sam Dawkins from John Radcliffe Hospital in Oxford. He will lead us through this second part of the wrap-up and give us a presentation entitled Seeing is Believing Predictable and Durable Treatment of Mitral Regurgitation Across Different Etiologies with the Pascal platform. Within that second part we will hear and learn about the ability of the Pascal platform to treat patients with MR. We will understand how patients can benefit the most from that approach and also see how science is backing up what we are discussing today. And without further ado I'm going to ask you Sam to present to us please. Thanks, Philip. It's been an exciting conference for edge-to-edge -edge repair with the Pascal device. Um, we've seen a number of studies uh, presented uh, with some important outcome data to add to the overall body of evidence. Starting with the commercial data, this is a piece of work looking at 3,800 patients treated with the spectrum of mitral uh, regurgitation etiologies, half of the patients with functional mitral regurgitation, and the remainder with degenerative and mixed disease. Starting with acute efficacy, so the vast majority of patients having severe mitral regurgitation and 25% having 3+. Plus. Um, the outcome uh, post-implantation shows 78% uh, of patients had no or mild mitral regurgitation and 98% of patients had 2+, plus or less mitral regurgitation. Uh, looking at that data year by year, you would expect as uh, centres get more familiar with the procedure and the technology, you might see an improvement, and that is indeed the case. So in 2021, uh, the patients enrolled had a, a slightly better post-implantation result with 82% having no or mild mitral regurgitation. Uh, interesting to see the speed at which the technology is being taken up. Um, the last thousand cases have been done over just the last four months, again with excellent um, early procedural results. Learning curve is important. Edge-to-edge -edge repair is a, a, a technology that requires careful collaboration between the interventionalist and the imager. And what you can see here is that the learning curve is, is relatively short for this kind of technology. Um, you and I will both be familiar with the challenges of functional mitral regurgitation. It can be a little bit more difficult and you can see in this data that the learning curve is slightly longer. But the, after a very small number of procedures, the outcomes are really excellent. Uh, this is an important piece of data um, from Peter Ludica's group uh, looking at uh, early uh, predictability of, uh, of uh, mitral regurgitation after device release. So he looked at 100 mitroclip cases and 100 Pascal cases uh, and looked at the acute intraprocedural change in mitral regurgitation. So starting with the mitroclip group, uh, you can see the baseline data there. Um, at discharge, this is looking for firstly at the post-procedural data, at discharge 81% had 0 or 1 plus mitral regurgitation with 73% of follow-up. The Pascal group had more mitral regurgitation, you can see a larger proportion of patients had severe mitral regurgitation and at discharge 91% had 0 or 1 plus mitral regurgitation with 87% at follow-up. Now this is a phenomenon that we will all be familiar with, you make your assessment after grabbing the leaflets with the device closed, you assess the residual regurgitation and you also assess the mitral valve gradient. What's really important to us as operators is that after release you have a similar or better result. Looking at the mitral, mitral clip data, 68% um, had improved or unchanged result after clip release um, with 32% seeing a deterioration. 
with the Pascal device, uh, and this is a phenomenon I think we're, you and I will be familiar with, after releasing device, you see that the, the residual mitral regurgitation is either the same or it's improved. And we see that it's the same or improved in 95% of patients. Looking now at the my class study, uh, you're the principal investigator for this. This is a um, post-market uh, clinical follow-up study uh, looking at Pascal in the mitral position. Uh, looking at uh, major adverse events at 30 days and change in mitral regurgitation severity at discharge. Um, so here we have 30 and 60 day data of mitral regurgitation severity and you can see that 78% have zero or one plus mitral regurgitation at discharge uh, with 98% um, uh, with less than two plus. Uh, we have seen in, in various other pieces of data that uh, the left ventricular end diastolic volume reduces with time. Uh, it's interesting and encouraging to see that this is statistically significant even as early as 30 days after the procedure. A single center experience looking for a slightly longer follow-up out to seven months. This is the bad Neustadt experience, uh, breaking down by um, all patients functional mitral regurgitation and degenerative mitral regurgitation, and showing the pattern that we see with uh, many of the studies that have already been published, that the post-procedural results generally improves with time, presumably related to reduction in left ventricular end diastolic volumes. Finally, CLASP, uh, in PCR London valves, we, we saw the two-year follow-up data, which is obviously very important. Um, looking at the uh, overall reduction in mitral regurgitation, you can see once again that the uh, residual mitral regurgitation uh, improves with time out to two years. The uh, left ventricular end diastolic volume, uh, as you saw, reduces at 30 days, but that trend continues right out to two years. What matters, of course, far more than the echocardiographic parameters is how the patient feels. And you can see that out to two years, 93% of patients in the class study had NYHA1 or 2 symptoms. Uh, survival uh, and heart failure hospitalization, uh, they are very important endpoints, clearly. Uh, and you can see that the survival uh, of the degenerative mitral regurgitation and functional mitral regurgitation group is excellent. Um, and the ho heart failure hospitalization, uh, very small numbers out to two years. So that's an overview of the data presented over the last few days at PCR London Valves. We looked at the real world commercial experience of 3,800 cases, uh, very good results in MR reduction. Procedure time uh, is less than 60 minutes after 15 cases in both primary and secondary mitral regurgitation, which is an important metric. Um, in a retrospective comparison of MitraClip versus Pascal, um, the predictability of the Pascal device was impressive after device release. My clasp has given us 30-day follow-up, both in terms of mitral regurgitation reduction and early signs of positive left ventricular uh, remodeling. The single center experience uh, from Bad Neustadt gave us data out to seven months showing a durable mitral regurgitation reduction across all etiologies. And finally, two-year class data was presented showing a robust and durable reduction in mitral regurgitation with positive left ventricular remodeling, and most importantly, high survival rates and reduced annualized heart failure hospitalization rates. Thank you, Sam. Great presentation. You've shown us the relatively high percentage of patients ending up with mild MR. When we started with edge to edge, we, we tried to, to bring it down to moderate. We'd be happy with that. But it seems like there's a certain shift now that the new aim, a new goal, treatment goal is MR mild or less. Rightly so? Yes, I do think that's important. Um, what we're competing with is the surgical experience. Um, the surgeons with um, mitral repair, with conventional surgical mitral repair, are aiming for mild or less, and we have to be able to do the same. We're the, it was the case that we were treating patients who didn't have surgery as an option. But as the technique evolves and as the guidelines evolve, we're going to start treating patients who could have surgery. And therefore, we have to be able to offer the same or better result. Yeah, very important point. Then you've also shown us the quite fascinating observation that the MR grade before release is pretty much the MR grade after release, or sometimes it's even better after release. May I ask you, how important is that? for you as an operator? And then secondly, could you speculate on some reasons for that, please? Well, I think it's hugely important. I think um, we need to know that the echocardiographic assessment we all carefully do after we've made our grasp uh, is stable, that after release it's the same. 
um, we're all taking on more challenging anatomy. We're taking on smaller vowels, we're taking, more, taking on more difficult pathology. And we need to know that those parameters are correct um, so that when we release, we can feel confident that the results will be as, as we predicted. I'm very encouraged by those results. I think you and I are familiar with this phenomenon for our, from our own day-to-day -day work, but it's, it's good to see it published. Um, the reasons for that, well, I think our techniques have got better. I think our imaging assessment has got better. I think one of the reasons that you might have a less predictable result is to do with tension on the leaflets. And I think probably the pathology where it's more of a challenge is secondary mitral regurgitation, where particularly where there's tension on the leaflets. And I think that having the option of two different platforms, you can use the ACE or the P10, can, means that you're not putting the leaflets under quite so much tension, which means you get a much more predictable result after release. Thank you. So, dear colleagues, in summary, you've seen that the great results we've seen in the early trials in a more restricted environment and stricter inclusion and exclusion criteria in terms also anatomy, looking at the uh, Pascal trials, they are now mirrored in larger registries, at different centers, early experience, looking at much more patients, less selected, really looking at clinical routine, and obviously this is a very important signal for us. And then secondly, it appears to what we see is what we get, looking at the very high predictability from pre-release to post-release. Again, a very important feature when we would like to treat complex anatomies with transcatheter approaches using the Pascal device. So thank you very much for joining and see you in the third part. <laughs>